anything that we use many terms like practicing or sati or mindfulness and awareness, but do we really understand the truth of that? And what is the purpose of just listening to different words to follow it, to do, or to understand the reality which that word represents? So the point is to understand the word we use. For example, what is meant by practicing? See, what is it? For what? And we're now talking about everything, like what is there, what is it to just practice, and what is the goal or the result, the benefit of practicing, what does it mean? Otherwise, we just follow the word and the term by our own idea, taking it for something that one has to do. For what? What for? See? If it's clear, then we can understand the teachings of the Buddha, not just to follow with the idea that I would like to, or I can do, or it's for me to have such and such. It's not just like that at all. But what is the most important thing is understanding each moment in life as it is from birth to death. What is that? How come? Can anyone make it arise? For example, just right now, sitting, talking, thinking, and they're seeing all the time. Is it possible for just one moment at a time to be many things together at once in the moment? Impossible. That's why we learn to understand what we take for life or what we take for anything now as it is. Can anyone do anything at moment of birth to arise, to be born in such and such moment, at such and such place, time, and so on? Impossible. That's why to learn to understand the truth of what is there. Where is it now? Is that just a moment ago? But where was it right now? Where did it go? somewhere or nowhere or completely gone, never to arise again. Only the idea of remembering it as something permanent, while it's not at all. There is nothing at moment when it does not appear. It's there. Only when it appears, after that, no more at all. Not any. Gone completely. Is it not true? So we are talking about the truth of life of each moment as it is, whether it can be taken for people and things, permanent, just there all the time. Even it does not appear, there is the memory about it that it's still there. But actually, it's not there when it's appeared. Who knows? It can be stolen or we don't know what happened. But whatever is there, just be there at moment of seeing and then gone. And the truth is more quicker than that. While it appears, it cannot appear just one single reality. There must be many, many moments unknown. But Buddha pointed out the truth to be studied, to begin to understand the truth which is covered up from eons and eons ago. Even it's there, no understanding of the truth of it, but hearing the right word about it, what is that which is there, without the reality which arises to experience, can there be that moment of practicing or thinking or wanting or going on in life as usual, see, when there's no hearing about the teaching, Life goes on. My conditions, who knows? Waking up, seeing, hearing, and then sleep again, and then wake up again, experience again from day to day, from moment to moment. See, who knows what are there in life? It's so very, very rapidly just changing unknowingly from one moment to another moment. But there is clinging to that as something. Because now, 
nothing arises and falls away. It seems it's there all the time. The object which is seen is seen, even right now. What does it mean? It is it still there while there is seeing, while there is hearing, while there is thinking. Impossible to be in a single moment. So what is the truth of life? No one can tell. Only the enlightened one who has enlightened the truth and showed the truth of whatever is there. To be studied, to have understanding, to be to have more confidence of the truth because no one can change the truth at all. What about what is what was experienced this morning? Completely gone, even just a moment ago. Is that not true? So what is meant by practicing? What is the result of such doing? We call it practicing. But what is the result? To practice what? See, just someone told to do this or that, and then follow. But no understanding of what is there. And what does that word mean? Practicing or development. The development of what? Why does one practice or develop? And the moment of developing, can it be the moment of seeing? Because seeing just arises to see. It cannot do other thing at all. It's conditioned to arise to see. That's all. Can anyone stop it to arise to see? Impossible. Because this is what Buddha said, Dhamma, uncontrollable. It's conditioned. Why do we say this? Because it's there already now. If it's not conditioned to arise, how can it be there? For seeing, there must be the eye base and that which impinges on it. Condition a moment of seeing. Just to see and fall, so how can there be different ideas about it? It has to be later moment, not the moment when it's seen. Just study life from moment to moment, and this is the development to understand fully of the truth, that it is just right, it's taught by the enlightened one. And this is the way to experience it. But it's not anyone. It's only the developing of right understanding firmer and firmer to condition moment of an expected moment. We cannot know what would be the object of awareness with direct understanding, developing little by little until it can appear as it is clearly. This is not now because now it does not appear clearly because the seeing is gone and hearing is there. It's not clear what is what at all. But this is what life is. Different from what we use the word practicing, because it seems like one has to practice to have uh, precise or whatever object is told to experience and what is the purpose of trying to understand that as what. Well. What about now? It's not true. No one can make it arise. It has a reason. So life has to go on by conditions, no matter before hearing the truth or after the truth, after hearing the truth. It's just by conditions. But the difference is that before hearing the words about it, about its truth, there is no understanding of the truth of that which is now appearing. But after hearing, there can be understanding the truth little by little. But life does not change. But this moment of understanding whether there is awareness with right understanding of that which is usually known normally in life. But before that, no idea, no understanding about that at all. Just take it for something on and on and on. Why is not there anymore? So, understanding what's true and what is not true. To be true to the truth, Satya. Otherwise, it's not the moment of understanding the truth of life, of whatever is there, the Ariya Satya, see. 
Ariyasatya is not something different from this moment, but it's the moment now understood the way it is, clearly as it is, little by little, onto the moment of different stages of understanding, because it can appear to understanding as it is, because now it appears, but to no understanding. But the way it is, is exactly the same. The difference is the understanding of the truth. What we've seen, we have heard a lot. It cannot be anything, only that which can impinge on the eye base and then falls away instantly. As soon as one opens one's eyes, many different things are around. But what is the truth? Each has to impinge on the eye base, how fast it is to form up, shape and form, as we use the word, nimitta, of whatever is there, because how quickly, how rapidity it is, the arising and falling away, that no one can just develop the understanding of one single woman by way of processes, impossible. That's why we learn to understand whether this is true or not. When it's true, it can be direct experience for sure, but not when it's not yet understood as it is, little by little. And this is in the Tipitaka Bhavana, the development of understanding from hearing Suttamaya Panya, Chintamaya Panya, Pavanamaya Panya, stage by stage. Otherwise, what is practicing? What is practice? What is there? Which practice? No understanding of any reality there at all. Use the word like sati, but what is it? At this moment, listening, is there sati? If not, when will be moment of sati? And what level of sati? It's just understand what is taught what is said about the truth, like now, there is a reality which arises and experiences an object. So true. What else can it be? It is that which experiences, who makes it arise, no one. But without conditions, it's impossible to arise. No matter before hearing the truth or after hearing the truth, Nobody can change the truth, but beginning to understand, little by little, not forget that what is there is only in a moment and then gone, never to arise again, even right now. And this is what is meant by developing understanding of the truth. And when it's wrong translated, one takes it for practicing, doing something. Doing, who do? When there's no one. So wrong understanding. Perform its function to go wrong. And right understanding performs its function not to go wrong. But to understand. Listen, I know that at moment, it's not me, it's not anyone. It's just moment of hearing and considering because of understanding each word represents a reality right then. It's there to be studied, whether it's true or not. It's there just by conditions. That's why life go on being pleasant or unpleasant, depending on conditions as usual. Very delicious food, very pleasant moment, hearing the music and so on. But that's are conditions for sati to arise unexpectedly when it's there. It proves that the understanding of no self is there strong enough not to be agitated, try to have it, or when it's there, what is it, and so on. It's so true, whatever is there, just when it's there. Different ones all the time. And it can be taught and studied and find out about the truth anytime, anywhere. 
no change at all. So true. So because it's the enlightenment of the truth. Please. It's also Boy. like hearing now, like hearing and confusion. Voice of different sounds. Some is pleasant and some is not at all. My condition, you see. But the understanding is that no one can make any theorize. That must be further condition and close condition, proximate cause for such and such reality. It's that taught by enlightenment for 45 years about the truth of what is there. Seeing, hearing, smelling, testing, talk, talking, whatever is there. What is the truth of it? Without the reality which arises and experience, can there be any time at all with nothing arising falls away? Whatever is not known is taught to be known about the truth which is there at any time to study, to consider the truth, even just right now. Confusion. Confusion is real at the moment when it arises and then gone. Understanding is when it understands and then gone. And ignorance is there when it arises and then it's gone. Condition the next moment. That's why we are going each moment. Yeah. Can Anyone does do not can anyone not go? They still here this point. Impossible. Because actually there are only different realities. The reality which experience and the reality which cannot experience. Nothing belongs to anyone at all because actually there is no one at all. Only thinking, changing from ignorance to have some understanding and develop on and on until it develops like we learn anything from childhood, kindergarten, on and on to be professor or whatever it's there, little by little. And there is degree in Buddhism too, which is the word Parinya, see, after Vipassana Yana is directly experience. The understanding cannot be gone completely, absolutely. Once it's there, never forget. Even that moment is gone, but the experience is there. And Sanya marks and remembers it correctly, little by little, more and more. So we learn about what is there now in the moment to have the understanding of realities as no one and no thing at all. No control. It's gone. Yesterday, you were sitting somewhere doing something. Where were you yesterday? Now? And what about tomorrow? Not now, not this one now, sitting here, talking here, different ones in the morning, in the in tomorrow, when tomorrow comes. Is this not true? 